Sup guys, welcome to this new video. In the previous challenge, I said I was working on this one. And finally the day has come. Three years has passed since Travis became the best assassin from USA, but after reaching the top, he disappeared without leaving a sign. During his absence, Santa Destroy City became a dark and unsafe place. Now Travis will have to leave his retirement behind and take his throne back alongside his favorite katana and wrestling moves to defend the people of Santa Destroy and to accomplish his personal goal. Can you beat No More Heroes 2 Desperate Struggle with the Blueberry? Like the last time, before heading to the challenge, we all have to establish the rules. First, as the title says, we can only use the Bloodberry during the whole challenge. Because of that, all the other katanas are banned. We can increase our strength or stamina, so Ryan team is banned too. We can, however, read the magazine from the shell to learn new suplex to kill the enemies faster. Compared to the first game, playing on bit of difficulty won't require using a used save file. So we can play this run with a new save file without problems. With the rules established, we can start the run without more delays. Let's go. Game starts off during a snowy day, where we meet our first assassin, Cloud Strife, with a gun. We can see him shooting at the elevator trying to kill someone, but no one was there. It's called fashionably late fuckface. This guy was the little brother of the guy who was killed by Travis in the intro of the first game, and he wants revenge, so we have to take him down without mercy. He's still a douche! Skelter here tell is the tutorial boss, but don't underestimate him. Compared to Dead Metal, he can kill you if you are not careful. His lash attacks are very fast, thus, if you want to find an opening without being hit, I recommend you to do the emergency roll until he stops his attacks. Watch out of his kit, he can stun and immediately hit you if you are unlucky. Some hits later, the fight will stop and a new scene from another place in the game will start. Here we meet this girl and she will tell us everything about what happened during these years and information about the future assassins. After that, we'll return to the fight and now Skelter will start to use his gun. You can block the bullets easily, however, it will drain your battery quickly. Avoid them is the best option. Keep avoiding his bullet and strike back to take him down. Afterwards, a helicopter appears bringing some familiar faces. And when I say familiar faces, I'm referring to... Her. Yep, Sylvia is back. Travis didn't forget her promise from 3 years ago. But she still refused with a 4 breaking wall reference. She tells us Skelter was the rank 51 from the UAA rankings, and because of Travis' absence, we have to start from the beginning again. With a new reward if you climb up until the top again. He refuses the proposal like a chat, and came back to... Oh for fuck's sake, don't tell me he is going to fall in love for her again. Please don't. God damn it Travis, stop being a simp! But we are not done yet. I thought this was impossible, but Skelter managed to survive the fatal blow. He said his last word to Travis and then killed himself. We watch a new scene where five thugs visit Beach's shop, destroying the place like it wasn't the big deal. And then... The next day, Travis is preparing to face another assassin until he receives a surprise. Bishop is dead. He immediately tells Sylvia about what happened to his friend and reunite to talk about it. Now Travis has a new motivation to reach the top. Revenge. Sylvia tells us the identity of his best friend's killer, Jasper Bat Jr., who, to our convenience, is the number one ranked assassin. So in order to get revenge, we have to kill every last one of the assassins until reaching the top. I forgot to tell you, in this game, the open world was removed. If you want to go to a specific place, you just have to press it in the maps menu. And you don't have to pay an entry fee compared to the first game. So we have free way to kill without pauses. But before doing that, 
Make sure to go to your hotel room and check the shelf to learn new suplex, which are gonna be useful to kill enemies faster. Also, if you have a spare time, help Jin to lose some weight. You will learn a new attack if you help her. The attack isn't a big deal, but it's cute to see Travis taking care of his cat. Now head to the store resort to face the next assassin. Are you ready? Excellent, but first things first. Hey, wanna listen to some tunes? Get use of this soundtrack, this game has the best one in the series. During the transition between the first and second game, Travis learns three new moves, a dash attack, which is extremely powerful with a ton of hit stun, but consumes a lot of your battery if you use it often, a forward emergency roll, and another power up that I'll reveal later. The game works basically the same as the last one, but with some minor differences related to the engine which are reflected especially in the graphics. Like the majority of the levels of this series, you have to kill all the enemies in order to proceed. In the next area an helicopter appears, ready to annoy you with its projectiles. Use the emergency roll to reach a safer place and kill the enemies. When you finish to clean the area, take the elevator to proceed to the next one. Here you will meet your first enemy with a ton of HP, and get used to it because this game has a lot of enemies with big difference and high HP. But this is not going to be a problem, if you watch my No More Heroes 1 Bloodberry challenge, you will remember that deadly combo to kill any enemy with 4 kits and a grab. Well, in this game you can still do it, but you have to wait until the tiger becomes red. The tiger is your ecstasy meter, if the tiger becomes red, there will be a big chance to pull off a power up from the roulette, but you can use it for something else. After cleaning the area, proceed to fight the boss, get ready to face 50 cent. And I'm not joking, this guy looks very similar to the Leo Life Rapper. He tells us his only motive to live is to fight Travis and die by his hand. So we have to make his wish come true. Nathan isn't hard. But if you want to beat him easily, I recommend you to take him to his room and corner him. If not, during the fight he will activate traps to make the fight way more annoying. But his room is a free trap zone, he will try to escape to the main hub. Don't let him get in away. This is the perfect time to use the last move Travis learned. If the tiger is roaring, press the minus button to activate ecstasy mode. Travis will be invincible and will deliver high speed attacks making it a great option to cause damage and stay safe. If you keep him in the corner, you will take him down quick. Before going to the next one, Travis has to visit Sylvia in the new UAA office to receive information about his next opponent. After that, we are free to go to destroy University. The level is extremely easy, kill all the enemies outside of the university to access to the gym. Inside the gym repeat the same thing. Compared to the first game, this one doesn't have an interesting level design. The majority of the levels are just killing every enemy and proceed to the next area. At least in the first game, there was a minigame or something else to do in order to make the piracy more enjoyable or different. Anyway, after killing everyone, go to the campus to face the boss. Travis enter to the football area where a cheerleader group perform a routine, presenting an overconfident jerk based on Clint Eastwood. And yes, the last thing is official, but how are we supposed to fight him and his group? Easy! He and his cheerleaders are launched into the space where the team transforms into Santa Destroys Parade Mecha. What the fuck am I even playing? And how are we going to fight him back? With a motherfucking Gundam, of course! If you're playing for the first time and you don't get use of the controllers, this battle will be hard. But if you've played this game several times, this battle is the easiest one in the game. Charlie only has two regular and one special attack. A double jab, which you can block pressing the CR button, and a laser easily avoidable by just jumping over it. Attacking him will fool your special attack gauge. If you manage to fool it, press the L button to activate a powerful blow. Overall, this fight is everything but hard. Don't drop your guard and eventually you'll beat him.
after the fight with Charlie, I recommend you to get out of your room and enter immediately to trigger a special scene. Travis will receive a fax from Sylvia giving information about Bishop's killer. And now, after leaving your room, the game will assign you missions to kill the five dogs that were responsible of Travis' best friend's death. If you have free time, do it to practice your abilities, and also an optional battle in the same place that you were before. Now, part of the level is destroyed because of the mechas fight. Cut out a lot of damage, we can say. Take the left and only side. Watch out with the surprise attack, by the way. These are the only enemies of the level. Kill them and head directly to fight the boss. Meet Kimmy Howell, also known as Travis number one fan. Her love for him is so big that she is upset to the point of insanity. Even she wrote a poem dedicated to him and he has to read it to make her feel good. But he discovers she wants to beat him to prove she is worth of his love. Let's make her listen to reason. Now it's lesson time. Kimi is one of the weakest bosses in the game. Her attacks are weak but fast. Keeping this time will... What? What the fuck was that? I hate the Nintendo Switch so much! Let's try again. Hopefully the game won't crash. Again, all of her attacks involve her flute katana. Her attacks are quick but are extremely weak. The stronger attack that she has is a bubble projectile attack. But for some reason, she didn't use it during the fight, making it way easier than I expected. Wait until she makes a sign to stay away from her. Don't hold back with her until you defeat her. This is a real fight with real consequences, sweetheart. <coughs> <coughs> And yes, just like Shinobu, Travis didn't kill her, due to her jout. Now let's go to the ranking fight. The Akashin point number one is waiting us. This level, located in the middle of the forest, will face for the first time the Chainsaw Man, an enemy type with high resistance, HP and attack power, but he is slow. Consider that if you want to kill him without being harmed. Later you will face more axe and chase of enemies, but at that point your trigger might be red. I've used the deadly combo that I teach you before to kill this kind of enemies. After killing everyone, proceed to the next area. Here you have to repeat the same, kill everyone, but now more enemies with high resistance appear. Don't be afraid to use the combo to finish them off quickly. Afterwards, enter to the house to fight the boss. Inside of the house, Travis find no one, except this small guy which scares the shit out of Travis and this creepy guy right of a Silent Hill game as well. Now we have to exterminate this bastard. Matt Helps is one of the heavy hitter bosses in the game. His entire moveset goes around his flamethrower. He is extremely powerful and especially annoying. Taking a defensive stand might be the best way to fight against him. Still be careful with his attacks. All of them have a lot of hit stun or launch power, leaving you in a disadvantaged spot. His flamethrower has good range, but if you stay close to him during that attack, he won't harm you, giving you a free chance to attack. His most annoying attack definitely are the molotovs. Every time he throws one, the floor will start to burn limiting your space to attack him. Patience will be essential to win this fight. And don't forget Ectasis mode. This attack will be crucial to cause him damage without taking any risks. Hell, that was a difficult battle. After killing him, a kid appears, trying to tell Travis something. What's that? However, Sylvia came just in time to save him and tells the truth about this kid. He was abandoned by his parents 30 years ago, and he made a pact with the devil to revive just for killing his parents. It seems vengeance is the main fuel to every assassin from the game. Oh man, wish I could continue with the video, but if I continue, it will end up being a long video, and I want my content to be accessible to anyone, so make sure to wait for the next part. Until then, See you next time! <laughs>